Hello, I'm Elizabeth Knight, co-author of Repair Revolution, How Fixers Are Transforming Our Throwaway Culture. Our book is about stories about people, men and women from our country and around the world who've taught us that it's, there's more to life than being a consumer. We're learning to fix things and fix our world together. It's also a practical hands-on guide to how to start and sustain your own repair cafe, fix-it clinic, or repair event. Hi, I'm John Wackman, co-author with Elizabeth of Repair Revolution, which is about community initiatives that are socially vibrant, fast-growing platforms for building awareness about the challenges that are facing our planet. A Repair Cafe is a meeting, a community meeting place where people bring things that are important to them, beloved but broken, as we say, and they sit with skilled volunteers who help them fix it together. It's a way to mend the things that matter to us. It's also a way to mend community. It's called a cafe because we also provide beverages and snacks and people have a chance to chat with each other waiting to be helped. So they're actually talking face to face, not on Facebook. It used to be that every town had its repair shops and you knew where to take things to be repaired. That knowledge was close at hand. But in a throwaway society, in fact, things are not made to last. They are made to break. And the right to repair movement challenges the companies that have designed things that will not last. In fact, they have found ways to make it difficult or more expensive or even impossible for you to fix the things that you own. The good news is that the Federal Trade Commission is solidly on our side and right to repair legislation is in front of the legislatures of at least 25 states. And the basic principle is, if you can't repair it, you don't own it. Well, it's the guy down the block that everybody in the neighborhood goes to when the lawnmower breaks. It's the high school teacher who's amending Maven and fixes things for neighbors and her kids on the weekend. It's, um, a, not a number of the repair coaches have their own businesses, fix-it businesses, men and women. It's often active or retired nurses, police officers, um, county clerks, lawyers, chefs, beekeepers. We've got a five-star Airbnb host. We have musicians. We've got high school kids. We have a kids take it apart table that a dad runs with a four-year-old and a six-year-old. All of them are the fixers. The common denominator is they're outgoing, friendly people who like helping others. They usually volunteer for more than one organization. Um, they love getting together with other people to solve problems. And they really enjoy the satisfaction of saying, we, we solved this problem. Well, all of us who are doing this, be it repair cafes or repair hubs or fix-it clinics or fixers collectives, repair circles, we all issue the same invitation, and that is bring a beloved but broken item to be repaired for free by an expert who is also your neighbor. And so the repairs, the repair categories that we offer, uh, the cores are uh, mechanical and electrical. The most common items we see are lamps, hands down, electronic and digital. Uh, clothing and textiles, very important. Then there's jewelry, very popular. Things made of wood, that's my skill set. Toys, dolls, and uh, stuffed animals, because you want families to come. You want to see the kids there. But here's the thing, that the repair categories that you are able to offer are a function of who in your community has those skills and who is willing to bring them forward and share them with their neighbors. And so at repair cafes, you'll see all kinds of other categories as well. For example, metal welding. My goodness, where else are you gonna find metal welding for free? Photo restoration is really amazing. People bring their damaged or faded photographs to be, you know, to be given the, the look, the way they looked when they were new. And the memories that those trigger are really something. I will tell you, laughter and tears are common. So again, who in your community has those skills? 
Do you have those skills? Are you willing to bring it forward? One of the terms that is a buzzword in, in mending these days is visible mending, which means you make the repair a creative solution. You're not trying to hide it. The visible mending applies to people too. We had a kid who needed community hours and his father, as his father dropped him off, you could hear his father berating him in the, in the parked truck before the kid got out of the car about, I better not hear this about you. You better behave yourself. Don't be an X, Y, Z. The kid was paired with um, Fix It Bob to work on lamps. And then he was also going to be working with someone who did the repairs to bikes and other wheeled, wheeled machines. Long story short, the kid ends up looking at a lawnmower brought in by an elderly woman. Um, and according to the adult mentor, the kid diagnosed the problem correctly in under 30 seconds. Rich said, this kid's a mechanical genius. When can he come back? And when the father was coming to pick him up, I said to both of the coaches that you've worked with, I'd like you to tell this dad how much you enjoyed working with his son and specific reasons why. And you could see this kid just blossom, stood up, beamed, looked the two guys in the eye. The next time the kid came back, he brought a pal from school and the two of them diagnosed lawnmower problems on their own with a coach over overseeing them. So it, visible mending isn't just on things. Repair cafes, you, you get to see the visible mending on the people right in front of you at every repair cafe. As John says, there's a story you could put your head down and sob and you're laughing so hard you, you snort your tea. Well, everybody, you are in luck because we have a whole chapter and the title is, how do I get one of these in my town? So where did that question come from? Well, it's the question we hear all the time when people come to a repair cafe from some other town. And they think, well, this is cool. How are we going to do this? All right, so I have three quick, you know, approaches to this. And, and you'll see this and much more in that chapter. <clears throat> but the first one is uh, find some friends. Do it with friends. Don't try and do it by yourself. Uh, and the key thing here is make it fun. It's really not a heavy lift if you've got friends uh, who are working on it with you. The second is to find a good partner. Now, repair cafes are held in libraries. Librarians have been champions of repair cafe because why? It's hands-on learning. It's intergenerational. All the things that librarians love. Um, look to your town conservation uh, group. Uh, look to um, the, your town board, uh, church congregations, community centers, senior centers. All of those are, are really, you know, good ways, you know, to um, find your partners. What you need is a nice big room with, uh, that's accessible, that has a lot of light, and you're going to need a lot of tables. The third thing is to find your fixers. That's the big question that everybody has. Where are we going to find the people who have these skills? So you know, first you look at people who do it professionally in your community. Why would they want to give this stuff away for free? Because there's no better way for them to be out in the community so people know who they are and what they have to offer. Go to your seniors, the retirees. My goodness, they have a lifetime of of uh, experience and knowledge. And then who are the hobbyists? And the best way to track that down is through your library. These are people with a particular passion for one thing or another. So mm, those are the three of the tips that you'll find, but this is a really extensive chapter and there's so much you know, in there that is full of best practices and great ideas. Be creative, have fun. I hope that readers of Repair Revolution will be inspired and empowered by the stories and the advice and suggestions contributed by organizers and volunteers from across the country about how to make this work, why they keep coming back, and what it means to them. Well, as soon as you see our book, you will understand that it is about much more than fixing stuff. It really is about creating social bonds and building community in extraordinary ways. It connects us to our sense of individual and social well-being. And you might say, oh, what a nice thing to fix things for other people. And it is a nice thing. 
But it is really much more than that. And until you go to a repair event and see and feel the generosity and the creativity and the sense of purpose in the room, you won't really know what this is about. And our book opens that door for you.